Oh, hi everyone. Um, I don't normally do these sort of videos about things I make, but I make an awful lot of things. So, uh, what I'm going to show you today is the Celtic Knot box that I made out of um, recycled timber. Uh, I entered it into a competition on instructables.com. You may have seen it on there already. Um, I didn't really go into a lot of detail about it. Um, so I'm going to try and explain how I constructed it, so you have a bit of an idea of how maybe you could make your own. Um, and I'll talk about the tools I used. Um, obviously, as I said, the box is already made. So um, I'm just going to try and explain it uh, the best I can from the construction. So I've taken a few photos uh, so you can have a, a bit more of a look at it. And I will have some plans available on my website uh, if you're interested in them. So um, here we go. The tools you're going to need to make the box are chisels. And the type of chisels I'm using are ones that have got a curve to them and they're used for carving. And there are some flat ones I use, um, which I'll talk about later. You're gonna need a saw. You can use an electric saw or a hand saw. That's mainly just for cutting the pieces to size. Um, you're gonna need a wood mallet, uh, which is, I mean, it could be made of rubber, but um, the mallet's gonna be used for the chisels, for uh, tapping the chisels, uh, for carving. You're gonna need a hammer to hammer in some nails. You're going to need a, um, uh, a drill, it could be a hand drill if you want it to be, and that's going to be used for putting on the, the, um, uh, the, the brackets and the hinges, and you'll need a screwdriver to, to, or, or electric screwdriver or drill um, to drive in the screws, and you're going to need a brush and a rag for putting on the stain if you choose to do that. Uh, in terms of the materials, you're going to need obviously your reclaimed wood, um, you're going to need PVA glue, and that's obviously for sticking the wood together. Um, stain, if you choose to use stain. Um, you're going to need a piano hinge for the, for the lid. And you're going to need metal brackets, and that's to hold the feet on, um, which I'll talk about later, and some dowel. Uh, that's not necessarily something you have to do with the dowel. Um, I use a little bit of dowel, but uh, you know, Basically, the brackets are doing most of the work, and the, you know, the dowel was the first thing I tried, but it wasn't wasn't enough. So, I'll talk about that as as we move along. These are the type of gouges that I mainly use for carving, and these are the ones that have the the curve to them, so they're a bit rounded and um, very useful for carving. I'm not going to talk in detail about how to carve. There's a lot of videos on carving. Um, on YouTube, I'm just going to give a general overview of how I um, completed the box. You're also going to need a, um, a saw. You can either use a hand saw or an electric saw. It doesn't really matter what type of hand saw you use either um, because the accuracy is not really that important um, if you want to sort of have a rustic effect. Um, I, I used um, a hand saw and I think I used an electric saw at some point too, um, but it was very rough, everything I did, you know, I didn't measure everything, so I wouldn't be too worried about whether you have a cross saw or just a, you know, a miter saw or whatever it is. Um, whatever, you, whatever you get on hand, it should do the job uh, if you're happy with a rustic sort of look. You're also gonna need a mallet and a hammer. A mallet's not essential, the mallet's mainly just for using on the chisels. Um, you can use a hammer on chisels, it's not great for accuracy and um, yeah, it's, it's better to have a mallet if you've got one or even just a block of wood uh, could work, but the, the hammer you'll certainly need for driving in the nails. You're also going to need a drill or a hand drill and some drill bits to put the um, hinges on and the brackets on. You also need some screwdrivers or a screwdriver to suit the uh, screws for the brackets for the feet of the box and also for the piano hinge. And finally, you'll need a brush or a rag for putting on the stain. Now you're gonna need some wood. I use recycled wood. And the photo here is actually of the pellets that I used. They're a funny shape. Um, and also if you're gonna use pellets, I didn't mention for tools, you'll probably need a crowbar as well. PVA wood glue um, to hold the wood together. A piano hinge for holding the lid on. I used a brass one and the piano hinge is basically just a long hinge. Brackets like this one to hold the feet on. 
some dowel for holding the feet on, but that's optional. And finally, uh, some nails for holding the wood together um, whilst the glue sets. So the first step is to put the planks together and nail it together with these sort of side rail things that I have here, these sort of pieces, and they're um, glued and nailed to those. And I did that on all four sides. I did all the carving on each side once I joined all the planks together, as you can see. And then I glued the um, pieces together. Um, I had to offset a little bit from the side uh, rail so that they would fit together and I'd have that sort of uh, funny uh, intersection that you can see there where there's like a bit of a gap um, between where they meet. And that was for that little <clears throat> corner rope piece that you can see. Next I put on the bottom and then I cut out the feet and I attached the feet. I used the brackets on the underside to attach the feet. Next I put on the lid. I cut out the lid separately as you can see. And that's because originally the blanket box was going to be a, a, a planter box but I decided to, um, to turn it into a blanket box instead. And here are some more angles of the lid uh, after it's been completed and stained. As you can see here, it's um, the inside of the box. So you can sort of see the construction. And here are some more just de details, close up details, um, photographs of the box once it was completed. Um, some of these are the, of, of the lid at the moment. Um, just the top part on the angle is the front and the side. Um, this is a bit of the front and the side again. Uh, this is from the actual side itself. And again from the side, that's a, the sort of pattern. And again side, a bit more across the lid this time. And another bit of a close up of the front of the lid and the top of the box itself. Um, this is obviously the front of the box and it's uh, the front from the top. What I forgot to mention too was that I actually used carbon paper to get the pattern onto the wood so I could um, carve it out. You can see the carbon lines in this photo in the blue. Um, the blue outline is the carbon paper. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it wasn't a full blown tutorial that shows you how to do every single step. Um, mainly because I already completed the box um, quite some time ago and I didn't really take a lot of photos during the, uh, the time I was making it. Uh, but if you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comments below. And I plan to actually make some drawings uh, for the box uh, for purchase for a very cheap price. Um, if you're interested in, in doing that. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll ensure I make the dimensions for both uh, metric and imperial so it's um, useful internationally if uh, anybody's interested. Um, and I'll include not just the dimensions but the, the design of the Celtic knot work as well if you wanted to replicate that. Uh, prefer though that you don't replicate it for commercial purposes, mainly just for your own self. Um, Mainly because you know it's my sort of my, my work, my designs, a lot of it, um, and I don't really want someone making you know sort of money off that sort of side of things. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video, and I do plan to make a lot more in the future. And uh, as I said, I do make an awful lot of things, and I, I don't really report a lot of it, so I'm thinking about doing more of that uh, to sort of share what. You know, I'm still a bit of an amateur myself and sort of just self-taught and uh, you know, I think that's part of the charm of the, the box itself is that it is a bit rough around the edges, there's a lot of gaps, there's things that don't quite line up properly and um, I kind of like that and I think it suits the, the wood too that I used uh, because that's a bit the same as well. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> bow, bowing and things like that, but um, yeah, I didn't try to get any of that out. I just sort of worked with it, and uh, as I said, that's why I didn't really take any measurements with a measuring tape much. I just sort of um, slip by a lot of the time, and um, I was happy with that. It seemed to work pretty well. And um, as I said, I, I, I was a runner-up in a competition with the Instructables website, and that was a 480 reclaimed wood. Um, competition 
and I won some uh, Irwin clamps, wood clamps, which are really good uh, clamps. And uh, you certainly, I, I found that um, the difference between those ones, which are pretty good quality, to just some of the cheaper ones I bought, there's a real noticeable difference. So um, I think when you can generally afford it for certain things, it's, it's well worth spending the extra bit of money because uh, yeah, there often is a difference. Anyway, I'll um, I'll leave off here and. Um, Yes, yeah, stay tuned for more videos and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.